Hello guys, uh, I'm Dr. Rada, Dental 101. We have also Dr. Lina today. Hello Rada, how are you? I'm good, thank you. What about you? Very good, thank you. So today we are going to uh, talk about the amalgam restoration. We are going to go through all the criteria and explaining uh, where it, uh, where you could have failed or what went wrong and some tips and tricks to um, tackle this. Perfect. That's a very good topic. We always get a lot of questions regarding, well, pretty much every task, but amalgam as well. So what we do today is we have the rubric here with us and we will try to tackle every single uh, point of the rubric so we can see how and when can we fix the mistakes. So the first point in the rubric is about the restoration finish. Mm -hmm. The restoration finish uh, talks about the smoothness at the end when you have finished your restoration. So basically, uh, if we find any restoration that is not very smooth, it's usually due to not use the cotton bot or the little cotton uh, roll that you are going to have available in the exam. So while you are carving, make sure that you are using that cotton roll or cotton bot to try to smoothen up your restoration. So at the end, you will find and, and also you will have a better result. Yes, so basically, um, in each step, try to when you're carving, try to smooth with this cotton roll or cotton bud. And also we got uh, some question regarding if we need uh, to have a restoration that is shiny or not. And the answer is no, it doesn't have to be shiny at all, just smooth. Correct. The second point on the rubric is about material handling, especially porosities. So usually we will find some porosities or voids if we are not condensing well enough our amalgam. If we are taking too long to start the condensing process, so some parts of the amalgam are already setting and you don't have time to get rid of those voids. So we need to be very uh, thorough and comprehensive when we are doing the condensation process so we can get rid of uh, every single one of the porosities. And another thing uh, people ask also is should I uh, mix my amalgam all the carpets at one go or one by one and the answer is one by one because the time you're gonna uh, mix the third capsule, let's say third, uh, the first one would have set and uh, you cannot use it at all. So uh, mix the first capsule, condense it well, then go back to the uh, amalgamator and remix the second one and so on and try to apply forces so and so it will be well uh, condensed and also apply it against all the uh, uh, matrix band or against it so you don't have any void place well your matrix band uh, with the uh, wedge so you don't have also any void or cleft at the uh, embrasure gingival embrasure area correct uh, the third point is about material handling as well, but this one refers to amalgam debris. This point should be very easy for you to tackle and have a very good score because, well, basically the thing that you need to do is just clean your jaws. So make sure that after you have finished your task, you put a lot of air and water with sufficient pressure so you can get rid of every remains of amalgam around the tooth and the jaws. So the fourth point is restoration integrity. So uh, this is an important point because you just have either very satisfactory or unsatisfactory. So this criteria is about having the integral uh, restoration or you have a missing cusp, missing uh, marginal ridge, or uh, you have loose restoration or you have fracture uh, so make sure that uh, everything is uh, one uh, restoration if something happened like you have a fracture of the marginal ridge of or your cusp uh, you have to learn how to um, correct it so basically if you have anything missing you uh, create a box you're going to place some ditches to have some retention and then you're going to build back your um, missing part and first of all of course you place back your band and then you uh, try to make uh, the correct anatomy because if you have a missing cusp or missing marginal ridge 
you f you fall directly into the uh, unsatisfactory and could fail. Uh, and also another thing to avoid having a missing uh, restoration. So uh, we got lots of candidates that uh, lost their restoration in the exam. Some they did ditches and grooves uh, within the cavity. So try to not have these uh, ditches or grooves uh, vertically, but try to angulate your handpiece so you get tunnels underneath the uh, intact tooth. Uh, this will create a very good retention and I can reassure that you won't lose your uh, amalgam restoration. Yeah, definitely, completely agree. So when you have any kind of problems with the restoration integrity, make sure that you have sufficient time to fix them if you have time to fix them, that's yes. very important. The next point on the rubric is about the tooth restoration junction, which basically means that when the examiner, or even if you are checking your amalgam after you have done with that, uh, the prop is not catching at any place. So everything is very well merged, very, very well flush, and that's going to depend on how well you have condensed your amalgam at the beginning, and also how well you have carved your amalgam as well. So make sure that you have refined your technique for carving so you don't have any kind of discrepancy between the tooth and the restoration. And the way to check it is just take your periprop and, and you know run it around the whole restoration and the seam and the junctions and the prop shouldn't be catching at any place. That's correct. So now uh, we're gonna go through the overhangs. So overhangs, uh, it could be because you didn't place correctly your uh, matrix band and your wedge. Uh, so this is important that you monitor and you check very well that you don't have any voids or any hole between the matrix band and uh, the uh, tooth. So you place very well your system band. Then, uh, once you've removed your matrix band, you just wait a little bit that the amalgam sets slightly, and then you um, you pass the floss between the contact points, and on and on. And then also what you can use is uh, you use your carver, you place it horizontally, and you carve horizontally like that at the um, gingival embrasure, so you make a, um, a good junction between the amalgam and the tooth. Yes, when you are flossing in between the teeth, uh, make sure that uh, nothing on the floss is catching. If you feel that the floss is kind of um, shredding because something is catching when you are flossing, make sure that you go in there as well and try to fix it without breaking the contact point. Very important. Yes, the next point on the rubric is about damage to adjacent or assessment tooth. This should not be a problem, actually, because you, in restoration, all the restoration, because you don't really need to prepare the tooth. Just be mindful and careful when you prepare your little retention, your tunnels. Don't shake uh, too much your hands. Control your handpiece and it will be fine. As well as the damage to the gingiva, uh, it should not be a problem either. Uh, you just have to be careful when you place your matrix band uh, to not cut or to not damage the, the gingiva uh, and otherwise it should be fine. Correct, so those previous points as you can see are very easy to score, you know, very good uh, in the rubric and uh, because you, should you shouldn't be able, points. yes, you shouldn't be have too much opportunity to damage the tooth or the adjacent tooth or even the gingiva. The next point in our rubric is about the proximal contact tightness. That's also very important because uh, you will fail under unsatisfactory even if your contact is too tight or even if your contact is too loose. So we need to make sure that you are placing your contact at the correct point. So you place your band and you are going to burnish uh, about one millimeter below the marginal ridge. That's where your uh, contact point should be if we are talking about the molars or even the premolars, yes. uh, and then you burnish it there so you can get a very good uh, contact tightness. Don't burnish uh, a very white surface because the contact tightness is just 
like the name says, a contact point. So we don't have to need, or we don't need to have like a very wide surface doing the contact. Um, regarding the proximal contact contour, that's also another thing that you can check with your contralateral tooth. You know, you can floss uh, the tooth uh, next to the to the tooth that you are working with or the contralateral one. So you can have a feel of how the contour for the contact should be. But if you are placing the band well enough and burnishing the band in the correct position, you shouldn't be have a problem with the contact tightness or contour. Mm -hmm. uh, and also when we try to carve this area of uh, proximal contact just be mindful that we take a lot of attention of uh, about the um, gingival embrasure but also you have to be careful that you have also an occlusal embrasure to uh, carve and to do so you have to clear this area to round it and be careful um, you have to care about the contact point and this occlusal embrasure as well. Correct. Um, the following point is the occlusal anatomy. Uh, very important as well. So you should have your anatomy in your head. You are going to have time to study, to practice a lot. But it is important to also have in mind that during the exam, you are not going in there blindly because you have a set of jaws. So you have contralateral tooth, adjacent teeth. So you can take that as a guidance so you can carve your anatomy. So just a few key points will be that uh, the cuspal height should be following some uh, norms, which basically if we are talking about the molars, the mesial cusp are usually higher than the distal cusp uh, by 0.5 millimeters or so. If anything, it should be at the same level, but ideally it should be slightly higher than the distal cusp. Mm -hmm. So take that in account also use the adjacent teeth to direct your central fissure so you don't displace it too much towards the vocal or towards the lingual so that's also very important so now the lingual buccal tooth contour so uh, we see a lot of people trying to they focus on the occlusal anatomy but they forget about uh, the contour or they do it too late so what we recommend is uh, try to do your occlusal uh, anatomy outline grossly, then you remove the matrix band and you start by doing your contour. Don't forget you have a buccal fissure for the upper um, molars. Then you are going to do this contour nicely, you carve it, and then you do the height of the cusp. Because when you start with the height of the cusp, usually you set it at the good uh, level, but then you, tr you finish by contour, then you lose more height. So you have a lower uh, buccal cusp, and this makes you fall, uh, fail, sorry, this criteria of cusp and height. Correct. Then we have a cusp height and cusp position following in the rubric. Um, so again, uh, Take in mind the points that, are, that we just told you. Um, the height should be guided by the real anatomy of the tooth. Uh, so please bear in mind that the vocal cusp and mesial part of those are slightly higher than the distal cusp. Uh, and position should be guided by the arch that uh, you are having in, the, in your jaw. So the cusp should be ideally within the arch, following the curvature of the arch. So make sure that you uh, take a look to that and just position your cusp well enough. So as you can see regarding the anatomy, yes, we need to learn a lot of things, but also we are going to have a lot of reference and a lot of guidance during the exam because we are, you know, working in a set of jaws. So you need to take advantage of that as well. So we think we said pretty much everything. So the last uh, criteria is the marginal ridge height. So basically, uh, it should be at the same level of the um, adjacent teeth. Uh, be mindful uh, when you place your matrix band to place it just one millimeter above. So you have enough uh, amalgam, not too much, otherwise your marginal ridge will uh, we fracture and this is what we want to avoid uh, so one millimeter then you round you carve it 
and uh, uh, you place it at the same level of the other teeth and it should be fine. Correct. I think that's pretty much all the rubric. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, if you know your rubric well enough, you will be able to tackle the task well enough as well. As a final recommendation, I will say that if you are doing the exam and you feel that your task, especially your amalgam, is not good enough, and if you have time, make sure that you utilize that time trying to fix it. Um, sometimes the end result when we try to fix it is not very pretty, but uh, if we concentrate ourselves in the anatomy and the functionality of the restoration, you will be safe. If we can have a beautiful restoration and also very functional, that will be a win or a pass, most likely. But if uh, the prettiness of the restoration is not there for some reason, just make sure that the functionality is there. Uh, I would like to add the last point about uh, how the amalgam set in exam. So my experience <laughs> was, was very good. Uh, maybe it's because some people, they don't uh, push very well uh, the uh, second part of the carpal when they try they mix it. Yep. So you have to press very well so the all the elements in within the carpal they mix uh, very well uh, when uh, you are using the amalgamator. Some people they just press nicely gently and then when they mix everything is not um, completely com yeah, yeah complexly uh, mixing so. Just be careful, press very well, and then you uh, should have a good amalgam uh, set that I had in exam. I didn't have any problem. I had lots of time to prepare my uh, restoration. That's good. Uh, for me, it was a little bit trickier. <laughs> I did suffer a little bit with the amalgam. I felt that it was setting too, too, too fast. Uh, probably we need to follow uh, Rada's recommendation here, you know, make sure that you are pressing well enough your capsule so you can push all the contents of the alloy and everything can, you know, be mixed very, very well. So I think that's pretty much everything yes. at this instance. We have revised the rubric roughly with you guys. If you have any other questions, if you want further information, make sure you can contact us here at Dental 101 and we will be glad to help you. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye.